What happens if it starts swelling in the retina? In this episode of OcuTalk, ophthalmologist David Lazar explains what macular edema is, how it manifests, what the risk factors are, and different treatment options available. Dr. Lazar? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, and welcome to OcuTalk. Today, we're going to be speaking with ophthalmologist David Lazar. Dr. Lazar, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, thank you so much for having me. Well, to get started, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and your specialty? I'm an ophthalmologist with subspecialty training in medical and surgical diseases of the retina. So I did, a, after medical school, I did four years of ophthalmology training, and then two extra years just focused on medical and surgical diseases of the back part of the eye called the retina. Wow. Well, that sounds pretty exciting. Um, for today's conversation, we were hoping you could talk to our audience about macular edema. What is that exactly? So macular edema is a broad uh, term that really just means swelling within the retina, the back part of the eye. If you think of your eye like a camera, there's a lens in a camera and there's film in a camera. And the retina is essentially the film. So if you have swelling in the film, the film doesn't work very well and the picture gets very blurry. So what would cause that to happen? Macular edema, as I mentioned, is a broad term. It's caused by multiple different things, but really what you have to understand is it's, it's either caused by abnormal growth of blood vessels that are leaking, right? Or normal blood vessels that are leaking. And so if you understand those two buckets, it helps you kind of understand that the, the causes and the most common causes, at least in the United States, are diabetes, which causes normal blood vessels to become leaky and then in, in more severe stages causes new blood vessel growth. Um, macular degeneration, which is new abnormal blood vessel growth. Something called retinal vein occlusions, which is where normal blood vessels that you have become occluded and start leaking. And then there's uh, another bucket of causes, which is just medication. Um, certain medications can cause swelling in the back part of the eye. How would I know that I'm suffering from macular edema? How does it present itself? Swelling in the back part of the eye uh, presents with painless blurring of the vision, colors might look washed out, or lines that you know to be straight might look crooked or bent. So who is most likely to develop macular edema? Is there a patient you see more frequently than others? Uh, is there a population that's more susceptible to it? Right. Again, we we're talking about large, a large, broad diagnosis here, uh, but you know anything that affects blood vessels. So there's nothing unique about the blood vessels in the back part of your eye versus blood vessels anywhere in the body. So any disease process that affects small blood vessels anywhere in your body will lead to small vessel disease in your retina and can cause macular edema. The most common cause of that, especially in the United States, is diabetes. So without a doubt, the biggest uh, problem that we have to deal with as retina specialists is diabetic macular edema, diabetes causing swelling in the back part of the eye. The, the other most common uh, risk factor, uh, which again speaks to the uh, uh, wear and tear on blood vessels is age. Uh, aging and macular degeneration is the second biggest bucket. And again, age is just wear and tear on the blood vessels and they become leaky and uh, lead to macular edema. So age, diabetes, high blood pressure, and then, uh, you know, certain medication uses, uh, uh, certain medications can cause macular edema. So patients who have a different eye condition called glaucoma are sometimes put on, on certain drops that can cause macular edema. So is there anything that we can do as a population, as an average uh, patient, to prevent it from happening? Depending on the cause that we're talking about, uh, the, the best advice I give my patients who ask similar questions to this is just be healthy, as healthy as you can. Um, if you have diabetes, try to control it. If you have high blood pressure, try to control it. Don't smoke. Um, very, very common sense, um, general health guidelines apply to the back part of the eye as well. How do you diagnose macular edema? What does the process for diagnosing it look like? One of two tests are used to diagnose uh, macular edema. 
in my office. One is, an, is called an OCT or optical coherence tomography. It uses ultrasound waves to allow me to look into the thickness of the retina to see the, the degree and location of the swelling. And the other test that's used is something called a fluorescein angiography where dye is injected into the patient's arm and pho photographs are taken in the office at the same time, which allows me to see kind of uh, the blood flow through the retina and see where, where abnormal blood vessels are leaking. So it sounds like there's probably multiple treatment options based on what's causing it. What are the treatment options available for macular edema? Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. So depending on the cause, uh, you can go anywhere from uh, least aggressive to most aggressive. So kind of that's how I like to think about it. And starting in, from least aggressive, sometimes nothing more than topical eye drops can cause, uh, can be a, a really effective first line treatment. Going more aggressive, you can give injections of medicine. Now these injections of medicine can be next to the eye or within the eye itself. Getting even more aggressive, you can do laser treatment. If there's an abnormal blood vessel that, that is leaking and it's kind of away from the central vision area, you could use a laser to kind of turn that blood vessel off. And then the most, most invasive way is, of course, surgery. And that's the last, you know, you never want to rush to that, but that is a effective treatment option for certain types of macular edema. So for an average case that you see, what would the standard protocol be from like start to finish? You diagnose the patient. What's typically the standard protocol? Well, it's, it's a good question, but a tough question to answer because it really depends on what we're dealing with. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just for conversation uh, sake, I'll, I'll start with, I'll, I'll describe macular degeneration because that's kind of the most, most common. Uh, macular degeneration is treated with injections of medicine in the eye. And the way it's done is the most common way it's treated is something called the treat and extend protocol where patients are treated monthly with these injections in the eye until all the macular edema is resolved. Once the macular edema is resolved, they still get the injections, but the interval in which you're treated gets extended out. For example, let's say the patient comes in, I give them an injection for macular degeneration, they come back in four weeks and all the macular edema is gone. They still get the injection at that second visit, but we get to add two weeks into when they have to come back. So they come back in six weeks, then eight weeks, then 10 weeks, then 12 weeks, et cetera. So what are the most common risk factors? Like, let's say I have macular edema, what, what's happening? Like, what are the risks to my eyes in that scenario? Right, so what I tell my patients is that um, the retina is kind of like a circuit board. It's, it's neurons kind of arranged like, like circuitry and macular edema is nothing more than swelling or fluid interrupting that circuitry. And so, and, and that kind of explains why the vision isn't bad, why the tissue doesn't function well. If that fluid is allowed to stay there for a prolonged periods of time, it can cause permanent irreversible damage to that, to the retina, to the circuitry, uh, where, where even if I do treat uh, the patient successfully and I'm able to get rid of the macular edema, the, the actual cells themselves are so damaged that the vision doesn't recover. So Macular edema is not, it's not uh, usually emergent, um, but it's something that, that should be treated aggressively and, and uh, consistently. What happens if it goes completely untreated? Again, depending on, the, on, on kind of the cause and, and background of the patient, uh, the worst case scenario is permanent vision loss. Wow, that is very serious. Is this something once you start treating it then could be completely cured or is it something that will need to be maintained long term? I get that question every day. It's a really good question. Just like all your other questions, it kind of depends on, on the disease that we're talking about. But I think it is valuable to, to kind of differentiate the, treat, the, the term cure versus treatment. So cure, I, I'm very hesitant to use the word cure uh, with, with a lot of the causes of, of macular edema because cure would imply that I give one injection or I do one laser treatment and poof, it's done. The disease is, is kind of um, put to bed, so to speak. Uh, whereas in, in the majority of causes of macular edema, it's more of a chronic condition where the macular edema can be treated effectively and patients don't lose vision 
but it's an ongoing treatment. So patients might need drops uh, or injections or lasers kind of throughout time. So knowing that it's sort of an ongoing process, what is your post-procedural protocol standard look like? So every surgeon has kind of a different um, protocol for how they deal with, with uh, post-injection patients. The, the, although putting a needle in someone's eye sounds horrible, it, it really, really is not uh, painful at all. The eye is completely numb. Um, it, the procedure is very quick. Uh, the biggest uh, complaint or the biggest issue that arises after the procedure is that patients uh, are a little, have a little discomfort because of the ocular surface. Um, we use betadine, which is a surgical soap to clean the surface of the eye to help prevent an infection from the procedure. And that betadine can be very irritating um, to the cornea, to the surface of the eye. So the, the most common phone call I get after an injection is just uh, patients saying that their eye feels itchy or scratchy or, or a little bit of, of discomfort, which again has nothing to do with the injection itself but rather just patient feeling the, the betadine that was, that was placed on the surface of the eye. In that case, I just tell the patient to use some artificial tears. Um, some, some, some physicians give a topical non-steroidal eye drop to help with the ocular discomfort, but it's, it's very, very uh, well tolerated. It's not, it's not uh, you know, crippling pain, it's just, just ocular discomfort. Well, thank you very much for uh, going into as much detail as you can on such a broad topic that I gave you. Is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience today? Yeah, actually, you know, there's something that I tell my patients that come in um, with macular edema, and a lot of times they're upset and, and kind of processing a lot. But, but the reality of the situation is if you were to ever pick a time in, in history to have this condition, whatever the cause of, of the macular edema, you've picked the best time to get it if you get it now, because we have such wide treatment options. Uh, we have such effective treatments that really, you know, in 2024, with few exceptions, there, there's no reason why people should uh, lose vision from macular edema um, if they're treated appropriately. So it's, it's, it can be very um, concerning and worrisome to patients, but I just try to be very reassuring um, uh, in the fact that we just are blessed to have such good treatment options that, that really they're gonna be just fine. So if anyone who's watching this ever gets diagnosed with macular edema, they should, they should feel uh, reassured that there really is uh, a lot out there um, to treat them and make sure that they don't lose any vision. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.